versus two, Masters Cup. And the scores have updated. The battlefield is set. The teams are assembled. Your MC Stormless, the Hype Master General, leads us in as we start in the south. And we're live. Yes, we are indeed, and welcome everybody to this ace game of the Best of Five Series 2v2 Masters Cup. We have here, after winning two fantastic games in a row, the last one being particularly long-winded and painful, but they got there. It is Von Aston as the Soviets, Isildur as the Brits. And in the north, we've got the reigning de facto greatest of all time team it is Gold Path 2, otherwise known as Nagano and Scotch, or I'm starting to say Scotch and Nagano because this guy's damn good. He might deserve to go first in that, uh, that <laughs> heralding of these great players. People are asking, what were the rules? You can see that it's 2 all, which means we're headed into uh, the fifth game of the Best of Five series, otherwise known as the Ace Game Decider. And um, it's on a predetermined map. Our Stelskirts is in a hierarchy of maps, and whatever hasn't been, hasn't been chosen in Game 1 and Game 2 means we now see uh, this one chosen and the vp leaders got to choose their faction and um, there you go and we now see that um it's, it must have been scotch and nagano i presume because they uh gg super quick but then that would have so, left yeah, the silver uh, from with a high victory point count Von Assen and Asildor played very well with allies, so I don't know how much that, that counts for. Uh, but uh, just to say, strong start from every player really here. They all, uh, apart from Asildor, locked in with commanders. Von Aston going for that tier 1 sniper build, so going to be slow to field units, but he's going to end up with more powerful units uh, to dominate the game with. And uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. They, they're just going in with commanders like that. It is uh, all or nothing in this game. It certainly is. The sniper is stalking his prey. The Sturm Pioneers have been baited by the combat engineers, and will they pursue? Yes, they will. And one of them drops. That is great play by Von Aston. Yeah, probably not worth losing two models on the Sturm Pioneers. It's, it's costly. Um, and of course, one of the benefits when your opponent plays the tier one like this is you get loads of map control um, as Axis. And they need to just make sure that they get that. Uh, Scotch left the fuel <laughs> on the on the east. Now he's going back. Whoops. Oh, got it. Yeah. And he... <laughs> <laughs> got to go get it. It's just like when you forget your car keys and you're heading out the door. It's uh, Nagana like, yeah, Scotch, wake up, wake up, buddy. <laughs> it's time to play. And I'm <laughs> sure, I'm sure that that's uh, a little bit of an underestimation of Scotch's power of resilience and endurance. Can't judge him based on that. This guy is a machine. Here comes the UC of Isolda just to give some harassing fire. Brutal start game. Um, Scotch here already going for the strategic decap that cuts fuel on the southwest to uh, go from it from Isildur. And, Sniper's uh, trying important. to turn turn that around, that cutoff, and I'm surprised we didn't see barbed wire on that cutoff. We've seen it a lot this tournament so far. This is the most exposed cutoff on else by far, and it's taken and plundered over and over again. There it is. We have had a this ref a... confirm in chat, by the way, sorry Stormless, just to reiterate, uh, just to continue my earlier point. It was Von Axen and Sildur with VP lead. They did indeed have lead and they did choose allies. I thought that would be the case. Didn't want to say it though, just in case I was wrong. Uh, but it is Al Stoutskirt's a slight ally from map, maybe. But only barely. It's probably the most balanced 2 versus 2 map. <gasps> Both trying to get down low. Yeah, but I also think they played so well with the allies, actually. Um... And they maybe feel the most comfortable with that. Their last game where they played as Axis was won kind of by the skin of their teeth uh, with that elephant. So uh, perhaps something about the allies being more reliable for them. Turnabout in play there. Uh, we had Isilda trying to track that retreating folks grenadier. Meanwhile, the combat engineer used the grenadier is keeping that UC away with a Panzerfaust to occupy the garrison with their rotten mine flamethrower. The levels to this game. The skill ceiling is huge, and you have to be really attentive. You have to watch for, um, with a lot of focus in order to pick it all up. It's cracking stuff. 
Oh, just like I think we talk about this every game is this crazy map control that Axis get at the start when Soviets play tier one and now it kind of gets returned little by little. We're seeing uh, a really, really good team play here as Sildor taking the Tommies as far up the middle of the map as he can, holding enemy units there whilst Von Aston does the capping and I, I really like that. Uh, I really like the way they are controlling the map against their opponents right now. But this is the fine margins in this level of 2 vs 2. The fact that this cutoff isn't close enough to the... Sorry, the cover isn't close enough to the cutoff means you can't take it and keep it as well as you can in the south. It's such fine margins. Grenadiers harassing Tommies on retreat with s seven Kar 98k rifles. Snipers on the edge of vision there. Getting a hit on the Grenadiers. And uh, suddenly, look at that map, a triple cap for the Allies now. They find themselves in a very good position, and uh, tech's starting to go up. Mechanized Regiment for the OKW, probably going to see that Puma again. And almost definitely, OKW are the most um, repetitive faction by far out of the five. At uh, the top level, it pretty much is always the same build, mechanized into Special Operations Doctrine. It's not even a meme anymore, it's almost just what the faction is at this point in time. See this TM-35 mine there? We'll have to watch out for the Stern Pioneers on retreat, especially if the UC forces them into that direction. Oh, Minesweeper's popped! Excellent, Stormers! Yep, they did. They also caught those sappers uh, laying a mine as well, so uh, Scotch and Nagano will know to scout before pushing. Tier 3 has just gone up for Soviets, and uh, I think that's going to signal a T70 very soon. Once just again, to, the map changes. <laughs> just to highlight the ramifications of this game, this best of five game. Whoever wins this game wins $1,000 each, which is life-altering money. These guys are all students, they're all in the, or they're working and they're in their 20s. It, either way, $1,000 goes a long way, and there'll be ample rewards for their... Um, their dedication to this, uh, it's not a professional RTS, but it's a damn fine competitive one. That's a lot to play for, especially uh, Nagano. I think conversion is very good for him. <laughs> it is. Uh, the ruble gets you, the dollars get you a lot in rubles, and then, you know, you can buy a lot in Moscow for that. Or St. Petersburg, which is where Nagano heralds from. Anyway, back to the action. MG42 pins. And look at this very early uh, AEC, which does have a nice coaxial machine gun. Can actually pepper, you just saw it there, pepper the machine gun and, and force it. And then, of course, the natural um, counterpart, the dance partner of the AEC, the Puma, arrives in the west. Yeah, the map really is just going uh, back and forth at the moment. Uh, VPs. Uh... Looks like Nagano and Scotch have had more control of the VPs. I think that's just due to the start of the game, the length of time that they held it for right at the beginning. Looking for our engineers there. Huge damage. Need to get to that cover position, of course. Yep, it took huge damage, and G43 rifles were advancing, and a rifle nade. But the penal battalions just eat it for breakfast and say, have you got any more? They oh, throw a satchel. That's going to be dodged quite easily. Elsewhere in the south, by the way, we saw some excellent aggression with the infiltration ace. We saw an AEC snipe, two folks going to do an AEC things. We are seeing a stabilization of the front, though, and uh, look at this Puma just uh, picking on those poor riflemen and the bulldozer that came before them. <laughs> so, uh, snipers got to be really careful. You've got the pioneers tracking the sniper with their increased oh. vision, G43s on the grenadiers. Uh, JLIs don't do that anymore, of course. <laughs> Thinking they were going to pop out of this building, but they nerfed that, thank God, for the sniper. <laughs> Ooh, nice little Trojan A, just chucks two of them for a change, but strange, but oh well. And uh, yeah, we've got a, we've got to um, pace ourselves storms, just like the players have at times, especially when they're reinforcing and thinking of their teching decisions, because as seen in that last game, oh my lord, it was an epic ordeal. It went the full distance, it was an epic struggle in the late game, and anything could have happened. Shock troops coming onto the field, and that's hardly shocking. Uh, shock troops are really, really good on a map like this. Sniper support picking off the models of the four-man Grens, then the shocks running in. It's going to be very difficult to deal with, even with the G43s. And of course, Austin doesn't have like all of the mine, fi uh, the mines. Sorry, that uh, you know the single mines that the Soviets and uh, Brits and everyone else has. So it's harder for them to stop those shocks getting close range. 
and dealing intense damage to the squads. Walking the mines, combat is doing their duty, and that's uh, really important. T70 uh, takes one shot and then decides to attack the husk of that tank, which is an odd decision. Boats Grenadiers versus these Tommies in the AC watching on. We've got loads of pitched engagement stormers. Very tense and tetchy play because this is an ace game side, but the Puma's now getting aggressive, but it hits a mine, and that's why you don't want to get too aggressive when the stakes are this high. Looks like the uh, Penal Battalion might go in for a satchel. There's not the resources for it at the moment, but uh, they'll get close. They'll try and deal damage with the PTRS, but I hope it's paying attention to the retreat path and the insane amount of G43s that are going to be firing on this negative cover. Oh. Those hybrid semi-automatics. Yeah, you don't want to do that against the Nexus G43 blob. Not a good idea. Shock troops capture the center. We've got the AC being proud and cocky and parading in the west. Um, we do have the G43 activity, of course, the PPSHs. Um, close quarter combat specialists give them trouble and body block them with a nice shoulder nudge there. There'll be some good fuel control coming in at the moment for Axis as they take east and west uh, on the fuel points. AC and the shock troops are trying to respond to it. And I'm hearing more mines go off. What was that? Uh, it's just in the north fuel points. A Grenadier dropped two men, of course, necessitating a retreat. Probably the weakest aspect of Wehrmacht um, from June 2013 to present day. Four man squads down to two men pretty much want to retreat. And that's where you lose your, man, your map preservation. And it, that's why 2v2 is so good for their maps because they've got OKW five month squads covering their asses. Mm. I like that mm, have resigned trying to get to top 100 bear maps 1v1 or too much ladder there. A little bit of um, flashbacks for Stormless, let's say. <laughs> I was there once. <laughs> for a day, I remember. Oh, you, I think you text me. No, I don't think you did, but uh, regardless, the banter remains. And we have a um, tactical Blobberino group coming into the centre. It diverges, though, and becomes squad mechanics of a, a very highly rated RTS game. Oh, nice. So you've got the Ostwind in for Scott. Nice. And uh, Ostwind's really good. In fact, they've got a very, very good infantry and anti-infantry load up. Oh, Tommy's love Stukas. getting killed by Stukas. And today is the exception. One soldier remains, and he has a harrowing tail. But Sturm Pioneers get into position. AC has to block them. The Sturm are going to get them on retreat. They still get the shot, Stormless. Ah, uh, it was uh, it was well played uh, by both. But it's still just uh, maybe unlucky there. AC as responsive as he would like. But uh, Ostrin now feels uh, confident to go in against the T-70 and the engineers on this side. Now, there are mines there. There are mines in various positions on the right, so Austin still has to be careful. This isn't any old Austin, though. Of course, this was heavily buffed um, earlier this year. It's pretty damn good now, quite frankly. It's a shock unit, if there ever was one. Um, the PTRSP is just waiting, though. They can't quite get their rifles in range. It's a little bit lazy. Of course, we've got an MG as well, suppressing them. So it looks like we're going to have Axis eat up the north. You're right to make that uh, verbal cue there, Stormless. I, I did pick up on it, and the sniper was about to die, but somehow <laughs> lived through it. <laughs> Is it worth saying it? No, you, you waited. You, 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 it's now your turn to uh, have some fatigue, but you're going to blossom in the late game. I feel it, Stormless. You're like a sp coiled spring. And you're oh, doing what I used to do to you during ESL back three years ago. I used to wait for you to do all the casting in the early game and get on those epic YouTube highlight montages. Oh, yeah. The, part, the parts that everyone skips to on YouTube. That's it. <laughs> when I used to, my voice used to crack because I was too enthusiastic. That was the one. And his turret traverses. ASC coming south. Coach Grandiers and Stone Pioneers wait for it. They're all leading with the Minesweeper because this is good gameplay. Nice Tommy Pineapple. Most unwelcoming variety. On these sides, you've got uh, trying to displace this MG42 at the moment. Barrage from the AT gun, the Soviets. You've got support from the T70, and they're going to have to work together to get rid of the Ostwind. Where's the Stuka? Stuka on the shocks, annihilating the combat engineers and 
almost destroying that poor Ziscon. Let's go back to the south where we see Folks Grenadiers forcing away the Tommies. To the Pioneers in peril. This double engineer build, the double sappers uh, from the seal door, is uh, really nice actually. Just helping to go around those corners with some pretty offensive uh, firepower. It's just what they Ostrand need. Ostrand destroying these trees down. Always good to see. Trying to get rid of the foliage. Who needs oxygen anyway? As well, let's keep an eye on the south. Keep an eye out for grenades. There could be one from either of the Tommies. Folks friendly. So that was the voice cue. It made no sense because he was versus an AEC. Don't listen to the voice cues now. Top tip there. <laughs> you know, I think actually looking at it, Von Assen at the moment has got a second AT gun coming out. So I think we're going to see the same as always. It's going to be a stall to 13 CPs for the IS-2. Um, looking at a seal door. Seal door can probably still tech. Uh, I hope so because relying on the call in AVREs. Less than ideal. No Both surprises Radius. with Nagano. How long has Nagano been playing special operations for? Is four or five uh, years? 1972. There was an early Russian version of a special operations doctrine OKW made by a student of St. Petersburg. It was on a very early computer. Puma coming into things, just to give a bit of a reconnaissance. That is a thing with the heroes. True Sight is enabled. Little known fact about True Sight, they actually wanted it before Men at War did it. They actually wanted it for Coney Heroes 1, but computers at the time could not take it. I do not make that fact up, but that is cool, right? Um, elsewhere, we've got AEC watching on the Stern Pioneers Cafe. Just trying to edge forward, a lot of suppression on the field, Stormless. Yeah, it's a nice play in the center to take the VP there. Shocks, they didn't use the smoke. Uh, actually elected to go for the incendiary barrage to push the MG42 away. And uh, the Allied struggle, it's slow, but they are moving up. They're moving up the territory um, constructively. They've got a lot of support weapons in place. Stormus, you sounded like a, a, a British news reporter during World War II when the Americans were capturing all of France. And we were like trying to struggle to ca uh, capture Caen. And it was taking us like three weeks. Slow and steady does it, lads, with some more weapons. Really nice play. Great stuff. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, we'll take it slowly. Oh, a picnic. Oh, we've got penals in the north being penalised by this Osman who doesn't like them, quite frankly. That's not very nice. And they're dead. That's actually the crew member of the MG that got the kill. Meanwhile, AC's going in for the Puma. Puma's struggling to traverse. It's got engine damage. AC hits Vet 2. Superior mobility kicks in and finishes the job. It's a tough one, though, because there's a Panzer IV and an Ostwind hanging around. He's going to go for that Stuka, and I think that's a real sensible idea. He's got access to the smoke. Hasn't used it. Surely it's there worth it. There it is. Oh, he's trying to take out the Austrian before the Panzer Tate finds him. But here's the attack ground, finishes the job. Meanwhile, by the way, some uh, squad action we need to keep an eye on. Uh, it's not actually that important. <laughs> Sniper, by the way, 28 kills in 18 minutes. Am I reading that correctly? You are indeed, yeah. It's been a busy sniper. Oh, a busy, busy boy. A busy boy you get uh, the fruits of his labours, most likely. Oh, 80 gun position on the Ascent of EP left. Off guard, Volksgrenadiers are chasing. The Panzer IV is going to come in as well. It's essential they don't lose those AT weapons. Can the Shocks get a smoke grenade off maybe to help defend it? No, they cannot. And uh, fortunately, they've put incendiary rounds on the retreat path. So even if the Folks Grenadiers got away, they die in the fires of Hades themselves. So that was a very clever play by Vanossa. Not exactly timed well. They got the kills with bullets regardless. Enemy forces are our supplies. Actually, Volks went down in engagement. Yeah. So, uh, Pagano, uh, a surprise that that happened, really. Clearly, his focus was elsewhere. How on earth did allies manage to turn this into a triple cap? I'm ever surprised at how these players can turn the map like this constantly. That's what wins tournaments when the Axis were under duress, they were able to cap three victory points. Also, got Stone Pioneers taking advantage of the allies being back on their haunches. Um, oh, look at this! Look at this! We've got a bit of sprinting action from the Grenadiers. They lose a model. And they are trying to take out the sniper, of course. Will they finish the job? G43 accuracy when they need it wasn't present. No, it's a great idea, but short-lived. What a fast-paced game, really. Actually, all the players have gone for, uh, you know, 
infantry that can fire on the move, that are flexible, they're flinging them all over the map, multiple engagements there. Going into an ace game in style. Oh and yes, uh, we've had a lot of victory points dropped off very quickly, which shows they've had a lot of swings and roundabouts with regards to the control of three victory points at a time. It's currently the Axis's turn. Stick as a boost, so I believe it fired, maybe I was mistaken. I've got to say, I think that as bad as it looks at the moment, I think the allies are about to come out on top. This is the same in the last game, and when uh, Von Aston and Isildur kind of waited for that late game combo they were, you know, kind of digging their heels in for, they're going to see it again. We're about to see the IS-2, we're about to see the AVRE. It's taken a long time for coming here as two players. Um, to disregard all the advice of Co. One players saying you need to capture cutoffs, territory sectors, etc. Um, due to the standard territory point, Panthers coming on. Nobody cares. There it is. Um, due to standard territory points giving resources, honestly, it's just a killing match out there. Victory points matter, yes. Fuel matters, yes. I'm not de denying them, but killing matters more, and that's what it sometimes comes down to. Tommy's again being utterly obliterated. Fortunately, the algorithm has pushed them south southward, and they survived. He's lucky. Here's the AVRE though. Brits need to uh, use this in, in tandem with the Soviets to just wipe out as many units as possible, I'm, I'm guessing. They've got to do some teamwork here. They're pushed back to the base. AT guns hailing into the front armor of the Command Panther. There's the Stop. snare. There is the snare. It did take out the T-70 at max range, but will it matter? Meanwhile, Osfins are peppering the AT guns from the flank. Just giving them pause for thought. Meanwhile, we've got a really important confrontation on the west side. Mine hits the penal, but they have to get to that victory point before they dip too we have low. Points now. Okay, that's 200 VPs remaining for allies. Well, it's going to get interesting from here. The good thing is, is that this time round, when they get into their late game uh, units, they've actually got more VPs than they had previously. Um, one thing they haven't got though is anti-air support and uh, Scotch, of course with uh, Jaeger Infantry, has got the JU-87s. So these tanks, if snared, will be uh, sitting ducks if that's not dealt with. You can tell the tiredness is creeping in for Von Aston as well. He's not migrating his AT guns away from this mortar and it is reducing his manpower. These guys are fatigued. They're lacking the, the full power, but both teams are struggling, so it's a fair battle on Alistair outskirts. The most balanced two versus two map. Don't forget, it's still the Von Aston who are currently losing, chose to play allies as well, so all's fair in this one. Sniper, shock troopers forced away by the JLIs and their Gren Grenadier compatriots. There's that IS 2A. This is it. This is what we we're waiting for. Oh yes. And, uh, I think now is the time to uh, pick up that pace a little bit because the counter push is coming. Even the Ostman and the Panzer IV on the right having to move back. The AVRE is going up the center. The Stuka is nearby. That's risky. It is. Tommy's survive, however. We've had a squad loss in the north, I believe. IS-2 is probably um, part of it, at least. He's now chasing down this Grundy and misses, of course, with a thunderous smash of that bunker busting high explosive round could finish off the grenadier now he doesn't have the pintle mount however so the re a is reduced oh, oh, oh my no. god panther the panzer four they're countering coordinated fire the okw equivalent of mark target is engaged AT's watch on, we've had a bit of a block from the Panzer, keeping the IS-2 in position. The Panzer dies for its troubles, will the Panther finish the blow? You just know it will. Here comes that shot right now. We're all expecting it, everybody that's watching, but the IS-2 says no. He wants to survive and he does an S-type manoeuvre and gets away. That was, uh, that was unfortunate. Uh, IS-2, I think rightfully, was well out of position. No, no support whatsoever on that side, quite frankly, deserved to go down. It did indeed. The Panzer IV was the 
At least that was the thing that died for Axis, not the uh, Command Panther. By the way, just trying to take out the Sniper. Clear bait. Amazing play by Isildur von Aston. Put the Sniper in the middle, cut the VP points. Backed up by two six-pounders, baby. Love it. This level of play at this stage of the series, at this stage of the tournament, is a wonder to behold. Well, there's another wonder to behold as we're about to see another triple cap from allies. What looked what? like an unrecoverable situation. In Scotch's base, we see uh, Tier fours just gone up, so we're going to see that late game soon. But uh, this is the tail of the tape. A pause exactly 25 minutes a second now, unfortunately. Uh, but there you go. We're seeing the ebb and flow, the to and throw, the back and forth gameplay that we've all came to see. And just very quickly, there's the overview to give you the KDs and the damages that show you what has happened thus far. Back to your regular sh scheduled live programming. And watches on down 11 kills, not too shabby. Oh, AVRE just got a huge shot there! So many bodies! That's two squads at least! A huge grey pool of dying and writhing bodies as the AVRE climbs to 12 kills in the blink of an eye. I always need to remember, you know, that even though they've just had a little bit of a, a, a peak there, in terms of map control, in terms of resource income, that they're actually still, I think, the weaker force on the map and definitely the slower. They need to not maybe spread apart so much and, and just dominate some VPs for a while. IS2 versus Panther. We've got to keep an eye on this one. It is big, but I see there's some action in the south. The AVRE threatening Stern Pioneers with that big spigot round. Or Petrod, as it's known sometimes. Nobody knows what it means, but we know it means death. <laughs> Here it comes as well. The Rocket Inverter opens up. Is that a bad idea? Certainly feels like it. Ouch. Back to the north. IS2's doing well. Reigning Supreme. The Panther's been pushed away temporarily. <gasps> Oh, has he though? No, he hasn't been pushed away. He's gone south. Coordinated fire in. Faust in. Six pounders await. Is this a trap or is it just a great play by Nagano? Uh, I think that was probably a little too overextended. Too little support. AT guns get a good position, but there's bouncers on the side armor. And uh, there it is. Aviary is down. Probably not necessary uh, to do that. Was the Raketan Verfa picked up as well? Yes, it was. There's the crater around it. You can tell that. Um, so it didn't even get... It just killed some manpower and a complete loss of a very expensive unit. 560, once, uh, 160 manpower and fuel. This is interesting. I mean, Isildur really has nothing now to... Uh to go in with so he's gonna have to play very carefully the ostwind would be fantastic on the left hand side of the map right now whilst there's really no uh tanks or armor to counter there's the at guns which we can maneuver around scotch also has the uh the light artillery barrage to just constantly shake up those positions whenever he's in trouble he's been doing that on the right a lot two stukas by the way for nagana they've lit up the sniper very on display at the moment Diaz reposition, Panther, that's a Wehrmacht Panther, not the OKW variant we're so used to seeing. That's in the north, here come the Stukas. They're firing, they're coming on the mid, it's on these AT guns. Ouch. What AT guns? They're no longer accrued, one of them's dead. Meanwhile, in the west, what do you see, Stormus? Well, in the west, yeah, I think, uh, as I was saying, there's really just infantry there, so it's like the Command Panther can just go in and, and dominate everything but uh, Command Panther can't cap and I think that's why we're just seeing these units take their place there hold it it's essential right now really the VPs again double VPs held by Axis we've seen it happen before many times uh, but they turn it around again Stuka Sentry and Sentry artillery combo from both teams a sniper by the way was an inch away from the final rocket there IS-2 is now fully repaired and ready for war once more. And um, and this 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 game 
is really developing into something truly special. It's got the tension, it's got the history, it's got the players to make these epic plays. All four of them are uh, Hall of Fame players, and we're getting a Hall of Fame game worthy of your viewership. Oh, here's the uh, JU87s called in there by Scotch. There's no snare, so not the, the best utilization perhaps, but the IS-2's got to keep moving. Shots absorbed by the trees. Oh! The Ostwind is coming in to clear up the AT guns behind this. It's so doing nice a great play. job. Panther's also tagging in for the Ostwind. Both AT guns decrewed. Grenadiers watch on. Now we've got the Shock Trooper's time to be in peril. Panther watches on. It's now destroying those Zisk guns. Great play there. Here comes the Command Panther just to complete the route. But no, no. Combat Engineer takes it. That's such an essential pickup there just to stop the... Uh... AT gun getting destroyed. There's a snare on the Panther. Is there now an opportunity out of this to turn things around? Sappers there recharging AT grenade, of course, just snaring the Panther. They could go again if Nagano's not careful. They could indeed. It's close. I think they actually may do. <laughs> They've backed the wounded animal into a corner, but that makes it ever more dangerous, and they haven't finished it off. Look at the armies on the title screens. Here comes the Stuka though. You know what happens when you push things into a pocket? You can close that pocket with thunderous artillery. The enemy is down to 75 points. 75 points, Stormless. Triple Cap's been in for a hell of a long time there. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. Yeah, I mean, after losing the AVRE, there's just no no real contest and all the time now that's been given on the left hand side the panzer schwer is now covering the vp in the west really they have to fight in the right fight in the center it's going to be tough for them to to go for that panzer schwer and lock a triple cap again so it could be a very long game eh? <laughs> if uh, want to win this. if 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 they are able but we now have a panther battle group for those that remember panzer elite two vet um Wehrmacht Panthers, and um, they are of the vanilla variety. Penal Battalion somehow forcing its way forward. Very risky play considering uh, they're only just tenuously capping the central victory points. They give up on that one, of course. By the way, if you're wondering what's happening in the west, it is, of course, a Schwer Panzer headquarters sitting on that victory point, so they're going to have to commit a lot of material to unroot it, and it's probably not worth the hassle. I think this is, uh, this is going to be close to the end of the game if uh, Scotch and Nagano want to orchestrate this properly. They've just utilized sight from Special Operations. We're coming up to the munitions again and the recharge time for JU-87s. There's two Panthers, a Command Panther. The flank under uh, under air support would be huge. And uh, thanks devastating. to the Spec Ops flares, they know all the positions. Oh, they do. This is the perfect moment. If they pull the trigger, they're gambling a lot, though, and they're already in a really commanding position. Is it worth the risk? Man Panther watches on. He's getting some pot shots in. Stuka's a boost, follows up. Command Panther uses it as covering fire. He's gunning for the AVRE. Just wants to cause some damage. Ouch. In the north, IS-2 takes out the MG-42. Panther needs to be careful in the center. To uh, Blitzkrieg its way out of there. S2 is just doing double duty on these victory points, Stormus, in a V shaped formation. Tagging mm. in and out. What have you seen? <laughs> oh, well, Aston was trying to get into the VP. I think he retreated the wrong unit. The shock's left, but not the dying Maxim. There's uh, JU 87s now coming in on the center, just like we said. Does this signal the uh, Blitzkrieg of the Axis infantry? Huge shot from the AVRE. IS-2's eating up the shots and the, the Pintle MG's trying to take down the planes. What Pintle? Which you can. Well, not what we think of skill planes. Oh. And it does. Oh, <laughs> nearly takes out the Stuka with the Grenzo <laughs> retreat. Indeed. Beautiful. Uh, here comes the march of the Tommies with their Welsh equivalents forcing their way forward. To... There's another one! Lightning never strikes the same place twice. <laughs> But a JU-87 might. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Here comes the SCGs of the Foch Grenadiers. Osvin giving covering fire. Well, there's a lot of AT on the field. Infiltration aids. 
well dodged, but still a lot of health damage by to Isilda. Osvins could finish this up and finish the job. There is, by the way, a Vickers waiting, so this victory point attempt probably isn't going to be successful. By the way, a sniper. Absolutely commend that sniper. 46 kills at this point in the game. Incredible recon unit is allowing the allies to position so well on the map. Oh, here it comes. Stuka's a foosh yet again. Oh, the sniper's way out of there. Well in time. And uh, what are we having coming on from the Brits? Let's have a look. What are your. It's an AEC, everybody. Late in the game. Maybe going on Stuka duty. <laughs> Probably going to be a command vehicle, I would imagine. Like the command vehicle will okay. be just okay. used for the start. Although we've seen smoke on the Western VP. That's how desperate it's getting from the shock troopers. Meanwhile. It's a pinned unit in the north, so it can't take away those vital victory points away from the Allies. I think we're in for another game four, you know. We're nearly on the same number of VPs. They're pretty much just getting the the loadout that they want. And look, AC just smokes through the Raketan. It's going for the Stuka, and I think I think it's there. One more it's hit. There. One more. Will it get it? Main gun destroyed just before it died. <laughs> The Ostwind was a merciless vanquisher of any hope there. By the way, in the south, Pan uh, the Panther was able to push the shock troops out of cover, and then the Flak half uh, well, the Flak Panzer headquarters took over, rather, or the Schwer, as it's officially known. And um, yes, they were forced away. But um, I tell you what, the Axis is now below 250, and it, it looks bad for our lives. If they lose victory point control for any amount of time, it, and they'll lose, but uh, the Axis are getting a little bit closer, edging closer to making this a, a finish and a race to that finish line. Well, I think he has felt it necessary to deal with the JU-87s by building an upgraded half-track. And uh, the JU-87s were causing them that many problems, to be honest. I think it's the panic that comes with that call-in. Yeah, but it's it's the idea that in it. Oh god, we've got to keep an eye on the snipers here. And the Panther can get a lot of rumblings, a lot of rumblings. Indeed, it's the AVRE that's in peril. It's under heavy duress. Thankfully, the six pounder was in position. Main gun straight on the AVRE. Not that it matters. Panther watches on. Another one comes in from the north, and the Ju87 stormers. This is big. It's not the Ju87s. This is the light artillery barrage uh, on the um, on the AT guns at the moment. They're gunning for that AVRE. And uh, it's just pinging off those shots, pinging off the armor. They may oh lose the command God. panther if they're not careful. Where's the they... snare? Where's the snare? From the sappers, they, they get the it. Streets. AVRE gets it. Panther lingers on. AVRE out. We now have this, the snare on this panther, the Wehrmacht panther. Will they be able to follow up and destroy it? The IS-2 certainly thinks so, but it's currently trying to watch over the victory points. It's still alive somehow. Stuka Zafus wants to put an end to it, Stormus. Oh, there's a big thing if this gets taken down. Oh, Stuka Zafus, the heartbreaker of Von Aston and Isilda. What a, what a crazy play at this moment. Allies, by the way, still have the VP, so there's still a ticker going down. One of the Panthers is about to go. So fortunate there because it was about to take a parting shot on the M5, uh, the crowd mower, but it was taken out with a final blow there. Meanwhile, shot troops have again tried to take the point, but we now have um, IR STG Obersol Darton pushing in from the western flank. What a game, what a raging crescendo we are building towards. I'm a little bit worried for Axis, although they've got this big army advantage, what they don't have is the capping power that the allies have. So um, it's a bit of a situation where actually Axis, even after that amazing play, are still finding it hard to jump onto the VPs right now. So um, Von Aston just about to call in another IS-2, I imagine. I would still say this is not a safe game for Axis. There's no safety involved in this final. It could go either way. 169 now for Axis. Sniper runs away from the Panther and he's right to do so. We've got a push in the centre though, and every victory point counts now, and machine guns suddenly become uber powerful. That's why Scotch, one of the most feared competitors in 2v2 history, has decided to build an MG42 this late in the game, everybody. Nice infiltration grenades, Tommy's suffering. Pintle mounts to the Panther could cause problems, but its rear armor is showing. 
northward. But Ostwind makes a menace of itself as the Grenadiers decrew that lonely Ziskum. Oh, there really is so much work to be done by that MG. The AT gun just cannot support it. It's got to get out of there. IS-2 is on the field. This could be it. This could be it. We've got Axis capping the north. Axis just finishing off the south. 47 victory points remain. It's do or die, now or never. It's for Silder and Von Aston want $1,000 each and a championship title underneath their belts. They're going to have to think fast and act faster. This is it. Yeah, there's uh, not going to be many more opportunities after this for allies to uh, get on the VPs. Trying to get those snares. There isn't really anything to finish it, though. It's so desperate. Everything smells oh. of desperation at this point. Shock troops go down to the Stuka. I think an AT gun went down to the Stuka as well. Everything went down to the Stuka. That's pretty much the story of this battle so far. It stinks of desperation, and it looks like defeat. But can we see victory clutched from the arms of defeat? And it's a very strong grasp right now. There's not much left. For Von Aston, he's running on empty. There's not much left for Asilda, but whilst they've got a unit left on the field, they're going to fight. Yep, and uh, there isn't actually enough time, I think, to get on the VPs uh, and cap from this point. So, hey, I think we're going to see Gold Path 2 take another 2v2 tournament. Another one, but their huge... first title this year. A big money prize, Nagano and Scotch, your rightful champions. GG. versus two masters cup and uh yeah it was a pretty good game i wasn't sure i thought it was like an auto match game at first but then it was like it was all right what do you think storms maybe two out of ten <laughs> right <laughs> no i think that was a, an absolutely fitting 2v2 final for a best of five two very very tired teams they gave it all they got, uh, got. they played quick style gameplay and uh what a pleasure what a pleasure you know game four probably the best game of the series but game five I think so. Uh, very, very fitting, and uh, massive congratulations to Nagano and Scotch, who uh, are the 2v2 champions. I love it when there's a deserved champion as well, when you can pinpoint what made them so great. Their execution, their teamwork, their fluidity, their communication, and their dedication to their craft as well. Um, they've been at it for years, and they've clearly mm. trained hard and long for this one, and uh, you don't get these kind of results without uh, a lot of hard graft and determination on the, the scrimming fields in uh, those custom games. So they deserve every single one of those $1,000 each. But um, you've got to give a hand out to, to Isilda, or sorry, give a hand to Isilda and Von Aston. $450 each. They are rightful second places in this tournament. They battle long and hard and they are deserved um, second best team of the tournament. They did damn well, and uh, hats off to them. Yeah, really, uh, fantastic play, um, and and such a great, uh, such such great character, really, to be two zero down and put their hearts into this game and put on a great show for everybody. That's why we're all here, right? We want to see these great games. They provided it, and they absolutely deserve a full respect and appreciation for that. All players do. All players do. Um... Very sane axis, okay. Of course, uh, the VP leaders chose allies in that game, uh, so I just think it came down to you know the, the tactics utilized on the battlefield. If you want to learn more about this game, I urge you to uh, either go through the Twitch VOD. We're going to get these on YouTube within the next couple of hours, um, so feel free to check them out. Feel free to check us out as casters. Of course, you've probably seen us before. Um, I know there's not exactly a Twitch front page and loads of new people um, at any one time, but still. Um, the options there should you want it that's exclamation mark a e c o h and exclamation mark stormless also joining us earlier today is tightrope um, a fellow great caster and he did a cracking job of um, the earlier four or five games um, stormless um, i mean any parting words for the thousand people tuning in uh, not much. Obviously, thank you to uh, Relic, the organizers, Kirahi, Stern Panther, yourself, A. You know, you've done uh, loads of work in this event. And of course, all the grueling casting and camera work today, uh, you know, which is, uh, as I personally know, it's, it's a lot of effort. And, it's uh, uh, max respect, yeah. <laughs> so uh, thanks to you as well. To all the refs uh, and the mods who, who put in really hard work behind the scenes, uh, I always 
do commend them. They, they do make these tournaments run uh, incredibly well. Um, they take a lot of work off of the shoulders of the, uh, the, the stream hosts and stuff. But uh, of course, big one to the community too. Uh, there's so many more big events coming. There, there's so much uh, more to come in this community. Relic know it. Sega know it. We know it. Uh, hopefully you guys do too and appreciate everything that's going on. Thank you, everyone. A uh, couple of last thanks, of course, the referees who make it all possible. And of course, um, to all the viewers that turn out and keep uh, the support coming. Um, we're all going to be rewarded with, by, by Papa, Sega and Uncle Relic later this year in Q4 with a huge 1v1 tournament of World Championship Calibre. It will be an internet-based tournament and it will have a, a pretty damn big prize pool. I believe it will be somewhere between this tournament and Anniversary Classic, or hopefully even more. We just don't know yet. The details are still to be finalised. Um, so yeah, look forward to that in Q4 this year. Um, so if that's a war gamer who says, I want another tourney. <laughs> yeah, it's really easy, isn't it? It's all just as easy as that. Just uh, get one out of my pocket. Here. So if you've got one Stormless Line around a tournament, there's one in the corner of you. Oh, it's an umbrella. That's an umbrella. I'm not afraid I'm out of tournaments at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, that was a fantastic event. Um, Von Ivan, if he's going to stream, we will host him because, of course, he... Um, keeps a lot of this scene alive with his regular stream, so big thanks to him. Oh, um, hey, hey. going to give me a little host, huh? Oh, yes, love it. And, uh, oh, we forgot to thank Relic, of course. So they not only made this game, but they also um, put the 4,000 Canadian dollars or 3,300 US dollars into the prize pool. So big thanks to them, I guess. <laughs> um, so there we go. Let's just uh, check if you've got somebody to host into. Um because uh, we are reaching our natural conclusion and uh, it'd be wonderful if any of the players who have played in this epic tournament would come out just to give a bow they deserve it they've played fantastically of course and uh and there you go and uh as i say it's me from this is me from a wishing you goodbye oh sorry <laughs> Like, don't no, let's do a sign off, off please also also wishing you goodbye so i'm very tired right now it's <laughs> fine it's fine um we are a professional uh casters in inverted commas and now we're gonna go to sleep and hopefully not die uh thank you for watching everybody and goodbye <laughs>